When you think of big adventure motorcycles, the Triumph Tiger 800 figures as one of the most recognized and revered ones in the market. And after selling thousands of units globally, Triumph has decided to put the plug on the 800 to make way for these, the Triumph Tiger 900. The Tiger is an important motorcycle in Triumph's portfolio. And given the immensely successful run of the Tiger 800, the new Tiger 900 has pretty large shoes to fill. The Triumph Tiger 900 is completely new. It's got a new engine, new suspension, new chassis, new features, new electronics. There's so much to tell you. So let's hop on board and find out more about these two brand new Tigers. Triumph began working on the new Tiger 900 from scratch. So the motorcycle you see here bears no resemblance to the Tiger 800 except for the switch gear that's been carried forward. The Tiger 900 is classified as the GT or the Rally. The pro suffix in either case denotes that it's the fully loaded top of the line variant. The GT Pro is the road bias Tiger, evident in the cast alloy wheels, lower ride height and Mazochi suspension with an electronic preload and damping adjustable monoshock. The Rally Pro, as you must have guessed by now, is the off-road bias Tiger as seen in its fully adjustable, long travel shore suspension, higher ground clearance and bigger wheels. The latter are tubeless wire spoke rims, a much needed piece of equipment that was missing all along in the XE range of the Tiger 800. It makes it massively easy to fix a puncture and I'm glad that Triumph has done away with the tube type wheels for good. Triumph's approach with the new Tiger's design is commendable as well and I like how they've made a motorcycle that blends form and function. Now the Tiger 900 wears a completely new design and I have to say it looks much better in person than what the pictures might suggest. When I looked at it for the first time, I wasn't really convinced if this was a good looking motorcycle but when you see them in person, when you see it right in front of you, I have to say it, it is one of the most purposeful designs that's so well executed that it also looks really, really attractive. Let's take a close look at some of the details, shall we? One of the first things that strikes you about this motorcycle is the new face. You have a big screen, a big beak over here, and in between these two are these slim LED headlamps and they just look quite striking, especially this unibar style LED DRL. Take a look at the side profile and you'll notice that the large fuel tank has been cleverly designed. And although it is narrower than the previous bike's tank, especially in the area where the seat and tank overlap, it holds more fuel. The new split radiator sits on either side of the bike with a neatly integrated shroud covering the large fans. Another notable and thoughtful improvement is repositioning the LED indicators to next to the headlamp, unlike the previous bike where it was fixed to the radiator shroud and broke in case the bike tipped over. The tail section of the Tiger 900 looks minimal and the lack of rear body panels lends the bike its go-anywhere identity. But the real magic lies underneath these body panels, where Triumph has finally addressed one of the biggest concerns that affected the previous Tiger. One of the biggest changes in the new Tiger 900 is the new frame and bolt-on subframe. Now the frame is not only lighter, but it's also slightly slimmer. But the big improvement here is this new aluminium bolt-on subframe. In the previous bike, this portion here, as well as this subframe area, was one unit and it was welded together. So in case you had a really bad crash, you'd have to replace the whole chassis. But with the new bike, in case you were to damage this end, you can just take these two bolts off and fit a new subframe. When you sit on the new Tiger, the seats feel far more accommodating than what its slim profile might suggest. The seats on both the GT Pro and Rally Pro can be manually lowered by 20mm in a matter of 2-3 to three minutes. Also, you get heated seats for the rider and pillion as standard as well as heated grips. The reposition handlebar and narrow tank has also had an effect on the ergonomics. One of the biggest improvements I've seen in the new Tiger 900 is when it comes to the ergonomics. The handlebar sits 10mm closer to the rider both in the case of the GT as well as the Rally Pro and that leads to a more natural seating position. But that's not all because once you're standing on the pegs, the narrow tank allows you to hold on to the bike a lot more securely than the previous model. On the whole, the new Tiger's design is well executed and in typical Triumph fashion, 
the quality of components as well as fit and finish is top notch. Another feature that oozes quality and feels premium is the new 7-inch TFT display. The screen is bigger than most mobile phones these days and the crisp graphics as well as the multiple style options not only look great but also easy to read even when the sun is overhead. Like most top level Triumphs, it too features Bluetooth connectivity and turn-by-turn -turn navigation. Besides the design, frame and TFD screen, the Tiger 900 GD Pro and Rally Pro share the same engine as well. And this new 3-cylinder engine is the star of the show. It produces more power across the rev range, while torque has also gone up by 10% and peaks at a lower RPM than the Tiger 800's motor. This engine is 2.5 kilograms lighter and this was achieved by using magnesium engine covers, a smaller oil sump and reduced oil volume. The other highlight about the new engine is the T-plane crankshaft. What this means is that unlike the previous triple's evenly spaced crank pins, the T-plane crank in the engine places pins in cylinder 1 and 3 180 degrees apart, while the number 2 crank is at 90 degrees, thus forming a T. Now what Triumph says is that that gives it the character of a V-twin in the low reaches of the ramp range, but as you cross 5 or 6,000 RPM and you get to the mid-range and the top end, it behaves like an inline triple. The difference between the old and new engine is felt as soon as you thumb the starter. From the deep rumble at low speeds to the howl as you reach the red line, this new engine manages to tug at the heartstrings with a strong character. We rode through some interesting roads in Morocco, through small towns, two open highways and everywhere the one thing that stood out about this engine was its tractability. When you're out there in the lower rev range and say at 60 or 50 kph also in 6 gear, all you had to do was just roll on the throttle and this bike would surge ahead. Secondly, the engine sounds good, it's a lot more peppier and the way the power comes in, it just puts a really really big smile on your face. Even on open roads, you could easily sit between 60 kmph or 200 kmph all day long without feeling the need of downshifting from 6th to 5th, which again highlights the strong mid-range of the motor. In effect, it makes the standard up and down quick shifter a bit redundant as you wouldn't need to shift gears that often. That said, there's a certain rush in keeping the throttle wide open while shifting and you won't mind using this slightly clunky system. The only issue I feel with the motor is the vibrations in the handlebar that arise under hard acceleration. It's not bothersome and won't leave a numb sensation in your hands, but it's there and you will notice it. However, on the flip side, cruising at 100 kmph or 120 kmph is wipe free. This has to do with the taller 5th gear and 6th gear, which means the motor is spinning at just under 4000 rpm at 100 kmph and a shade under 5000 rpm at 120 kmph. That's great for relaxed and fuel efficient cruising on long rides. As before, there's a clever suite of electronics in the form of traction control and riding modes in both the GT and Rally Pro versions that keeps the bike pointing the right way. The road, rain, sport, off-road and rider modes alter the level of traction control and ABS intervention. Also, the off-road pro mode specific to the Rally Pro model, shuts ABS and TC to allow experienced riders to drift the bike and have a lot of fun in the process. But one of the most important components on an adventure tourer is the suspension and Triumph has put in serious effort into getting this right in the new Tiger 900. Now the GD Pro variant gets a brand new Marzocchi front fork and an electronically adjustable Marzocchi rear monoshock. And both these suspension components feel way more sophisticated than the units on the Tiger 800. I distinctly remember the Tiger 800 XR, the road-going Tiger suspension that was comfortable but the front end felt disconnected. Thankfully, that's not the case with the GT Pro suspension. Not only is it great at absorbing bumps and potholes, but also delivers better front end feel. The GT Pro's electronically adjustable rear monoshock alters damping as per modes that are selected with the option to tailor it between comfort and sport if required. In addition, the four preload settings allow one to adjust the ride height if you are riding with a pillion or luggage or both. Besides the wide range of suspension adjustability, the Tiger 900's optimized weight distribution 
has also made it planted and flickable. With the engine now sitting slightly forward and lower by 42mm, the handling has improved and how. Again, with the way you sit on the bike and the wide handlebar gives you so much leverage that when you're pushing it through corners, the GD feels a lot more connected now. Also, the improved throttle response and the low end grunt makes it great to just power out of a corner and have a great time. The Rally Pro version is great fun to throw around corners too, despite its relatively narrow tires, softer suspension and higher ground clearance. The braking too has improved by miles with great feel and feedback through the lever. The brakes on the previous Tiger 800 were alright and they didn't really do a great job uh, and then felt as reassuring as these new Brembo Stylema calipers. Now, not only are they sharp and offer considerably more bite than the previous units, they are also very easy to modulate. Even on the off-road Focus Valley Pro, they didn't feel overtly sharp while braking on off-road sections. As capable as the old bike is, the new Tiger 900 Valley Pro is in a completely different league. The bike we rode was shot with the OEM spec Pirelli Scorpion Valley tires and they helped unlock the Valley Pro's potential. Then there's the engine's strong bottom end that helps immensely when you're tackling sand or loose mud. When you take this motorcycle off-road, that low end ground really, really shines because when you get on the throttle, you have this instant surge of power. So when you want to slide or correct your line, uh, you ha don't have to really rev the engine out like you had to in the Tiger 800. The weight distribution makes it easier to turn or stop the bike off-road. The Tiger 800 XCA, as we call, required a lot more muscling and fighting to do the same. But the final piece that makes the Rally Pro so entertaining and capable off-road is the new Showa suspension. The Rally Pro is so forgiving and entertaining to ride off-road that you could be either a novice or pro and the fun caution remains consistent. For a big adventure tourer like the Tiger 900 to do what it does off-road, it is truly remarkable. It certainly wasn't an easy job to build upon the popularity and success of the Tiger 800. But what Triumph has managed to achieve with the Tiger 900 is quite promising. Both the GT Pro and Rally Pro offer an adventure touring experience that's clearly above what the Tiger 800 managed. The good looking yet focused design, light and flexible handling, as well as the comfortable ride have elevated the Triumph Tiger experience. But the cherry on top of this cake is the delightful engine, whether it is in the way it delivers performance or in the way it sounds. The new Tiger 900 is expected to go on sale in India by April 2020, and the prices should go up by Rs 60,000 to a lakh, considering the additional equipment. Going by the way this new Triumph Tiger rides, it's going to be even more hard to overlook this incredible proposition.